Hello everyone. Um, so this talk is just me explaining one joke. Wait, do I have a clicker? Is that a thing I'm supposed to have? No. Fine, man. That's that's fine. Yeah. So so this this is just me explaining a single joke. Um, so this is going to be a fun 15 minutes. I'm not saying there's any actual jokes besides this one joke in it. And obviously explaining a joke kills it. So I'm not saying there's going to be any humour in this at all. So you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, so this is an in-joke as well, and I think like in-jokes, like it's, it's not an in-joke just specific to like a small group of friends, it's, a spe it's an in-joke specific to like a reasonable section of the games industry, and I think in-jokes actually kind of properly unpacked can, can kind of explain a lot about a thing, like seeing all the assumptions that go into them, seeing all of the, all of the context that's necessary for them to work kind of explains a lot, it just kind of... Anyway, yeah, like so, uh, 0451, you know, seeing that as the combination for a thing says a lot about like the heritage of the immersive sim, the kind of promise of the immersive sim, the fact it failed um, and, you know, never really got anywhere despite some attempts now to kind of resurrect it. Um, giving a video game 7 out of 10, um, like which is, you know, the ideal review score because, you know, it shows you did something interesting. Um, like that's... That's something that, that says a lot about, you know, how video game scores work. You could, you could do a whole half hour talk on the score 7 out of 10. This isn't that talk. <laughs> I'm explaining this, this line. If only you could talk to the monsters. Ah, now wouldn't that be something? Which is a line from the Edge magazine review of Doom in 1994. <laughs> Some people will recognise this line, other people won't. I've, I've explained what my talk's about and some people won't. No, I don't know what you're talking about. So this, this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is the joke. This line, which, which still gets quoted, right? So this is still a joke that's live and active, you know? Well, it's 2012, but, you know, still, still recent, given that Doom came out 22 years ago, like last week. If only you could talk to the monsters, goes a much mocked and only slightly misquoted line, yeah? Like, talking to the monsters in Destiny's House of Wolves. You can tell it's, yeah, you know? Jesus Christ, that Yoshi's Island review. Let's almost talk to the monsters level. This is a screen cap from NeoGAF, right? People on NeoGAF are still making this joke, still driving this into the ground. RPS had a whole feature which was about talking to the monsters. <laughs> um, which was, you know, uh, Agony Art column by Ian K.O. Demon. <laughs> So, like, let's, let's unpack this joke. Right, so the, the joke really has two components. One component is that it was in Edge magazine. So, <laughs> Edge magazine. Founded in 1993, um, it's a weekly, it's a, sorry, monthly magazine, print magazine, still going, 23, 20, 20, whatever. <laughs> Um, yeah, many years later, it's still running, still going, still has the same kind of, kind of feel to it. It's, it's survived that long. Um, I was kind of balked at the challenge of trying to describe Edge properly and try to describe why Edge makes one half of this joke. Um, and then I found a post, and unfortunately he's not here yet. So I'm just going to quote Kieran Gillen extensively here um, from a great Tumblr, Tumblr post he put up where he showed this, this ad in an early Edge, it's an in-house magazine for Edge. Um, and in this post he says, there's so much to hate. The self-satisfied elitism, the sneer at their peers, the judging of the reader, its austere humor, humorlessness, etc., etc." But it's brilliant, like he, he carries on. It's not just him ragging on Edge without any other, any kind of redeeming factors. Um, so yeah, like he, he kind of goes in and deconstructs this. So this is like a w thing worth seeing for just how Edge kind of views themselves. There are much cheaper magazines. Some have posters or stickers. Some review every game good, bad or average. Some are easy to get hold of any time. They never sell out. Edge isn't like that. <laughs> To be honest, Edge isn't for everyone. <laughs> you know, and like, that's, that's, that's Edge, right? Like, Edge is, 
aims aims for something more actually to, to be charitable like they're serious about games and they they want the medium to evolve like 22 years ago there was no one really pushing for like you know games as art games as a thing to be taken seriously games as a thing that you know people should care about deeply this isn't just like a joke this isn't something you should be ashamed of this is something you should dedicate your life to because it's important i mean also when you have that attitude, you can sometimes look slightly pompous and you can sometimes miss the point. But, you know, like, not being afraid of that is, is kind of why the importance of Edge, right? Um, I'm also going to quote some things that Kieran Gillen said that was nice within that post to kind of balance out just quoting him out of context. Uh, generations of the brightest British games journalists have toiled under that, anonymously under that banner. Uh, their gold standard reputation as like a legendary magazine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, like so, an another thing. Part of this is that they've only given 17 10 out of tens in their entire 22-year history. Um, like that's just a kind of standard of like, hey, like they didn't actually suffer this kind of weird grade inflation that other video game sites have done. Like they've still kept, kept like you know, still a significant thing. If Edge gives something 10 out of 10, so. The other half of the joke. Doom! <laughs> <laughs> so Doom, uh, it like kind of birthed the FPS genre. Like that's not quite true, but you know, in some senses that's true. Um, and it's kind of like it's kind of silly. It's kind of like it's kind of like a over the top like death metal album. You know, this is from the official Doom comic. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know who, who's seen this. This is the official Doom comic. This is official dialogue from the official comic of Doom. <laughs> Rip and tear. Rip and tear your guts. You are huge. That means you have huge guts. Rip and tear. <laughs> you know, like, and that's, you know, this comic is, is kind of a stupid comic. But it also, you can't really argue that in some sense it doesn't capture what Doom is about. Like, a lot of it is about, like, yeah, things exploding into a shower of bloods. Yeah, wouldn't it be cool if I really was fighting demons with a really large gun I couldn't hold in real life? You know, like, that's, that's kind of what it's about. Um, and it's, it's about some other things as well. Like, you know, there's a reason that it, it still survives. It's still a beautiful, brilliant game now. You know, like, the, the architecture in it is kind of abstract horror this kind of really expressive architecture. Like, this was one of the first games to properly make use of 3D, to feel like you're in a 3D space, and you could move around. Like, sure, you could actually shoot up and down, but you, you, you still felt like you're in a 3D space. Um, the movement, like, this was a game that kind of introduced, to some extent, like, circle strafing, where you're running around, and it's kind of a balletic thing, and moving around. Like, it's, uh, so JP Le Breton said it's like, it's like playing Robotron, but you're actually inside it. Um, you're moving at 50 miles per hour. You know, you're, you're using your agility as defense. You're not just have hit points that are slowly getting accreted down. It's one of the first games where you could do a rocket jump. You couldn't actually do the rocket jump up because it, it didn't work that way, but you could explode a barrel and that was a designed way to get to a secret level in, in the original Doom. Um, it had a bestiary of inventive mod monsters that actually kind of behaved different different ways, that acted in different ways, that you ha had to fight in different ways that, that added meaningful kind of tactical challenges on. Um, and you know, it's got a legacy. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a legacy of like mods and of user generated content that was built in from the beginning. It was built in that other people could make their level packs, and that continues on. Even today, you know, you could almost say that Doom is an art scene. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that, that, that joke is that Jerry Mickle gave, who is, who is over there, and also on the screen there, um, gave a talk. Right there. Yes, standing right here. Uh, no, in fact, yeah, just, just over there. Um, gave a talk called Doom is an art scene, which was uh, open to, to John Romero. Um, Sorry, this is a, it's a callback. <laughs> It's, it's, also, it's also a call forward because uh, Jordan, in a previous slide, had a thumbnail of the video of that talk. So it's, it's an it's a intricate web of references. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. So also, like, even I've done a thing with Doom. This is the Doom piano. 
which is also in the corner there. I, I don't think actually functioning, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, we made a, a piano that you could play Doom on. That's Martin Hollis, who made Goldeneye playing piano and also playing Doom at the same time. Like, you know, like the legacy of Doom lives on. Um, so yeah, so basically I think I've given enough context. Uh, the joke is that Edge, slightly pompous, slightly self-serious, kind of missed the point of Doom, an essentially silly game. That's the joke. <laughs> um, but so yeah, like, so actually, actually, that's not quite right though. Because actually the quote was wrong. Like that's how people remember the quote, but this is the actual quote um, at the end. If only you could talk to these creatures, then perhaps you could try and make friends with them. Form alliances. Now, that would be interesting. Um, and you know, like the thing is, that's kind of right. Like that would be really interesting. Like a game that did the thing that Edge wanted Doom to do would be a really interesting game and kind of really worthwhile. And I would totally play that. And I would totally, I'm super, fascinated by that kind of design problem and that's that's a design problem that actually you kind of see going throughout the years since Doom in the FPS genre like this is the gnarly from Quake um, no from Unreal <laughs> um, and you know like this is a, a non-player race that you see throughout it that's kind of threaded through the plot of that game like you know that's 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 a thing that's kind of important and that people saw and were like, yeah, cool, it would be really cool if there was like a race that you could make friends with, actually, in this, in this FPS game, you know? Or like the scientists in Half-Life, like they're, they're kind of iconic because they're your allies. You can actually form alliances with them, they can help you, you can choose what to do. Um, you know, like it's kind of this utopian strand running through games. Like what if games were about like, you know, emotions, not about violence, huh? <laughs> Um, you know, like, what if, what if, like, do, as, this, as this thing says, like, Doom was an outlier, what if Gygax and Armisen had made some war-focused game instead of Counts and Courtship? Will Crother designed his, had designed, decided to entertain his kids with his obscure caving hobby instead of exploration of childhood friendships? You know, like, these kind of counterfactuals, these are super interesting, like, what would have happened? Um, yeah, and, and also, like, actually, if you look at Doom, this also applies there. Like, Doom had this whole mechanic um, of infighting, where if you make a monster sh like fight another monster, that monster will fight back. So you can lure them into fighting each other and then not have to do some fighting yourself. That's super interesting. That's already kind of exploring the idea of these creatures as, as independent entities that have their own opinions, not just as moving targets to shoot not just as blobs to be destroyed. Like, it's already saying, hey, yeah, so what if these monsters didn't actually like these monsters in this scenario? What if you could manipulate their opinions of each other? That's already in Doom. That's already kind of there. The, the seed was already in Doom that the Edge was crying out for. Um, now if you search for, uh, if only you could talk to the monsters uh, on Tumblr, the main thing that comes up is in fact people talking about this game, Undertale which is a kind of, um, like it's not a JRPG because it's not actually Japanese, but it's, it's a JRPG style game that came out earlier this year, notable for being the best game of all time, as voted by GameFAQs. Um, and it is a really good game, and it's a game where you're moving through this, this monster, and all of these monsters you can either choose to fight, or you can choose to befriend, you know? This is the conversation option. You can check them, you can threat them, you can cheer them up, or you can flirt with them. You don't have to fight, you know, this ghost. You can flirt with it instead. Um, and you know, through the game you don't actually have to kill anyone, and that's the kind of slightly heavy-handed message that this game has, and this is what everyone's so excited about, and this is, this is like the thing that everyone's excited about 22 years later, is, yeah, like, what if you could flirt with the monsters? Wouldn't that be something? Um, but, at the same time, like, it's not actually like Edge kind of saw that, there's a bit here where they're like, Edge has no intention of joining the rabble mindlessly praising Doom beyond its worth. Like, you're wrong. You're just wrong, <laughs> Edge reviewer of 22 years ago. I'm sorry. You are, you are still just actually wrong. Sorry. Um, you know, and also they gave him it 7 out of 10, which even by their harsh reviewing standards is, is probably wrong in retrospect. So, um, yeah, I think the joke still stands. <laughs> <laughs>